Hey everyone, let's paint up the Dazzle Zaku. New Type is a fast and reliable source of gunpla paints and tools shipped internationally. Purchasing at newtypehq.com slash frostysnow also helps support me with a small commission. Ooh, been really saving up on this kid. Finally gonna make it. Ooh. Yes, yes, it's so pretty, even the darn. Yeah. This is where the money's at. Always search out the junk first so I don't have to deal with them. I start by cutting off the gate nubs. Sand with an old 400 sanding stick. And 1000 sanding sponge. To learn more, click the link above to my numb mark removal video. And like my new nails? The outer armor gets two layers of surfacer, a standard first step to all my paint jobs to help the paint stick to the plastic and prevent peeling. I start with a tacky coat, then a wet coat. Next, two layers of gloss black, sprayed wet to get a good shine as a base for the upcoming metallic silver paint, which will be given the marble effect. The full process is in my How to Marble Paint video. Crinkle two layers of saran wrap, mix 7 to 3 ratio paint to leveling thinner, and start painting. High pressure, very fast, close to the part. Starting again from the first part, I can see the pulling on this one. It's good. Give it that really bright silver right on top quickly. A little bit more. Okay, so this looks like not really enough, so I'm just adding a little bit. Okay. Another piece here. Okay, this looks good to me. Someone in the comments called this 5A grade Wagyu marbling. Yummy! After mixing up a blue-green color for the dozzle, we move on to candy painting. The key for candy painting is multiple thin layers rather than one thick layer to prevent pooling or the paint gathering on the edge of a part. I also mix in some extra thinner after the second coat to make sure my color doesn't come out too dark. Although it's common to paint the cables a different color from the armor, like a black, silver, or gold, I decided to try something different this time around and just paint it like the armor. I also thought marbling it would be fun. This is the first after the first coat and this is after the second coat. Clear paint is a bit different from opaque paint and it's easier to see an uneven paint job. The key to getting all the colors looking the same is to always spray one coat every round, hold the airbrush and pull the trigger at the same distance, and keep the timing of your hands the same, not too slow or too fast. I'm really watching the color now and decide to stop here. I don't like my candy paint too dark. We move on to the inner frame. I usually paint the inner frame after my outer armor because outer armor always needs more work, drying between layers, decal, panel lining, and top coat. After debating between matte or metallic, I decided to go with a dark metallic for the inner frame so there isn't too much contrast with the glossy outer armor, especially as I already plan to have some matte armor parts. I use the same gray surfacer and gloss black as a base to the metallic. I forgot to film painting the metallic. Gun metal. Now all the miscellaneous parts, gold, silver, and matte black. I use a black surfacer, no significant reason. Gray would also work just fine. Ordered these MG size spikes and just got them today. They're so freaking expensive because I have to pay for shipping just for this one item, but the store didn't sell anything else that I wanted. Really love these spike option parts. When you have parts without pegs to clip onto, you can use double-sided tape on a piece of pla plate and spray with much more ease. Notice how matte the black surfacer is. So I paint a gloss black as a base for the metallics and a color for the matte black parts. I need the gloss for the metallics and I'll matte top coat the rest. Compare the gloss black and the surfacer. I'm often asked what silver I use. Kung's Perfect Silver, the most realistic silver in my opinion, with very fine pigments and none of that sparkling effect most metallics have. 
If you're looking for a cool tone, classy, and not too cheap or yellow looking gold, IPP Super Fine Gold, well, just looks great, don't you think? I made sure to find a gold that matches the gold decals for this kit. It's also one of Cookie's favorite and a very popular gold in Korea. Whenever I finish painting all the parts, I always feel really good, like, oh, yes, done. Then it's like, oh, decals, womp, womp, womp. I'm just joking, guys. But these gold decals were quite tricky. The instruction manual tells you to press, scratch, rub the top of the decal before removing the clear plastic film, but it didn't always come off. I found the best way was to leave the decal on for a good 5 to 10 minutes, and the film usually came off a lot more easily. Using some water, Marfit as a light glue for the decal, and my pinset, we move on to water slide decals. You actually don't need to apply decals on a marbling kit because the pattern is already so busy and the black decals that came with it wouldn't show up much anyways, but I still wanted a few of them on there. I usually prefer the IPP gloss top coat over the Gaia as it seems a bit glossier, but Cookie used the last bit of it. So here we are with the Gaia clear top coat, giving each part two strong layers. Now the matte parts. IPP matte is my usual go-to as it gives the mattest finish, but I was faced with some problems. So my matte top coat is getting to the end of the bottle and this is where all the pigment and the matte cloudy stuff is and it's making the stuff I've painted really cloudy and it's not supposed to look like this. So I don't know if you can see, but... And I've used this paint a lot and uh, I know it's not supposed to look like that, so I'm just going to add a little bit of thinner and hope that helps. It didn't, so I repainted the gloss black and used the Gaia Flat Clear instead. I guess the ratio was already off, even with the added thinner, it was still foggy. You may notice that I'm now applying the rest of the gold decals after top coat. The circles you saw me apply earlier were just an experiment to compare the decals before and after top coat. I found that the gloss top coat really dulled that great sheen the decals had, and I decided to take the risk of the decals peeling off over time and only top coat my paint job but not the decals. As we continue, I'd like to address something in regards to my marble painting video. A lot of people commented that I could have used the wet tissue method, pulling a wide piece of wet tissue and placing it over the part for a marble effect because it's easier to control and get an even effect. There's videos for it online if you don't know what I mean. Before I try a new technique, I always do my research too. I didn't use it even though it was easier for two reasons. One, I simply didn't like the smoky spider effect. I wanted more of what someone called the Wagyu beef marbling effect, as you see here. Second, for this kit, I fell up to a challenge, forcing myself to play with paint and thinner ratios, painting techniques, and timing control. Obviously, that was just my personal preference. If you like the wet tissue look more, then that's great, give it a go. It's something I wanted to mention in the marbling video but forgot to do so. Now, let's enjoy ourselves some snapping ASMR, shall we? What is the point of this detail? It's not going to be shown at all. It's just... What? This is why I love clear kits. It's just, at least you can see the details, but what a shame. Cutting off some pegs for fitting. Oof. 
I decided to pull most of the clear film off after assembly to minimize the contact with my fingers and keep the stickers as pristine as possible. Just look at how pretty it is! And here we've got a fun little gimmick with the pilot. Why don't they give us one of these for the head and waist too? I hate these rubber. Ugh. I swear, my fingers weren't drunk here. A viewer commented once that my builds always look so easy. That's because it's hours of work in a 20 minute video, so I decided to include a few bloopers and complaints about finger pain. I end up finding some different size cables and work on switching out the crappy rubber Bandai gives us. I cut off the original pegs, cut it down to fit into the cable, use a little glue to make sure it doesn't come off, and add some internal wires for extra support, making sure they are the same shape as the original cables. Use soft and thin wires for this, as it'll be easier to shape. I started off with whatever wire I found, the ones Cookie used as a support for his resin kits, and I had to shape them with a pair of pliers as they were so hard. We buy most of our heavy duty tools, wires, and the wire cutter at local hardware shops for much cheaper than hobby stores. That's why when people ask, I don't know the sizes of the wires. They're cheap enough to buy a variety of sizes and eyeball what you end up using. Once everything fits and is all about the right shape, I use a bit of glue to hold everything in place. Looks much more realistic and mecha, doesn't it? Changing out the cables is another prime example of something looking easy, which in fact took numerous refitting, testing, cutting, sizing, shaping, and placing before getting it right. However, I always think changing out the cables is worth it. Unfortunately, I didn't have the right size for the cables in the head and had to just give the ugly rubber a coat of gunmetal enamel paint and go with it. Thanks, Bandai. Using some cheap stickers from a local stationery store, I add the mono eyes. The eye looks pretty good for what it is, if you ask me. Sorry about the occasional fan noise throughout the video. Sometimes I just need to have it on after painting or I forget it's on while I'm filming. We're really near the end game here. Overall, this was not a hard kit in theory, but I actually made a lot of errors, did some things in a weird order, and made things harder for myself than it really had to be. However, I'm really happy with the results. I bought this kit on my first trip to Japan, a P Bandai from Akihabara that I hand carried back with me to Korea. I always meant to marble paint it, but was saving it for when I felt ready for the new technique. You wouldn't think so, but the marble painting and the gold decals actually worked really well together. The Dazzle Zaku is a mobile suit of royalty, and I'd say it looks pretty grand.
Hey, Cookie. Where are we going? Raining. What are we doing? I'm driving. Go to, to coffee. I'll go to coffee. Yeah. Your favorite coffee place? Yeah, favorite coffee. Okay. Rainy, rainy day. Whoa. Italian coffee. Italian. He says this is the best coffee. And this is an Earl Grey. Honey, <laughs> this sent us um, some hats from his studio. Wow. Wow, hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop hi hey Jo. Uh, hi everyone. Forest snow here. My name is Kutai. Korean cafe. Korean in Bucheon. Oh, thank you. Uh, I love you. Make a condom. Okay, together. All the class. Okay, condom. I love you, condom. And copy. Bye bye. And good job. Okay. <laughs> oh, English word. Bye bye. Hope you enjoyed the build as much as I did. Remember your likes, comments, and subscription helps this channel grow on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Also, if you don't want to miss out on a video, click on the notification bell and you won't miss another one of my awesome videos. Thanks always so much for your support, everyone. Ah. Oh yeah, yeah. I also have to pay this guy.